Hi everyone, hope you're keeping safe and doing super well. If it's your first time here, my name is James and I'm from Sydney, Australia. Today I'll be showing you how to get rid of root rot. Hey! Hey! Do you want a root? Excuse me? I beg your pardon? That was forward. No, no. This oh. root. No thanks. Okay. Unfortunately, my Marble Queen Pothos over here is suffering from root rot. I concluded it the other day when I pulled open the pot and I saw some mushy stems. So I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to get rid of it. If you like today's video, remember to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and bash that bell icon so you get notifications so you don't miss any updates when new videos drop. Hang tight. So the Marble Queen Pothos is one of my top favourite house plants and here's a photo that I snapped back in June 2021. Now in comparison, I took one this morning and it is now August 2021 and as you can see back in June 2021, it was looking a lot more fuller and voluptuous as compared to today. I was observing constant yellowing leaves and leaf drop and at first I thought it was just general leaf turnover where your plant will direct its energy to brand new growth as opposed to maintaining older leaves. Now, it was happening for a really prolonged period and I thought this isn't right and when I pulled the plant out of the decorative pot the other morning I noticed black mushy roots coming outside of the drainage holes and bingo! root rot. So stupidly, I know exactly how I got this root rot. When I was doing my routine maintenance the other month, instead of wiping the leaves down, I brought it to the shower to hose off. I usually have well aerated soil, but then I totally forgot that this plant hadn't been repotted yet and it was sitting in the original soil that the plant came in, which resulted in overwatering, which is one of the main causes of how you can get root rot in the first place. So a few ways to identify if your plant has root rot includes yellowing or dropping leaves, mushy roots in my case, wilting, slow growth. If you dip your finger into the soil and you notice that it's quite wet after some time, and odour. Root rot will generally smell quite bad. In today's video, I'll be documenting the whole process from start to finish and hopefully this helps you treat your root rot if you ever encounter it. Now, what you're going to need is the plant you intend to treat, of course, a couple of trays so you can catch any of that mess, a pair of chopsticks, a pair of gloves, a pair of scissors, the MVP of the show, which is hydrogen peroxide, 3%. I purchased this at Woolies for $4. New soil, a new pot, a empty bowl, water, a watering can, and I've got some disinfectant wipes and some wet paper towel. Now, the following items are optional and you don't need them. I'm actually going to pre-mix and prepare my soil in front of you before I repot my plant. So that's why I've got charcoal, perlite and a shovel here. Okay, so first up we're going to prepare the hydrogen peroxide solution. This is why I've got an empty bowl here. So basically you need some water and your hydrogen peroxide solution. So I've used about half of this bottle, which is a 200 ml bottle. I've got 100 ml left. I mix it to a ratio of one to three. You can do one to two, or if you're feeling adventurous, one to one. But I'm gonna err on the safe side and use 100 ml and do a one to three ratio. So just pour that into your empty bowl. And I use this a protein shaker because it has the measurements on the side, but I've put 300 mils in here. So that's a one to three ratio. So just gonna pour that into the bowl. And that's your hydrogen peroxide solution, which you're gonna use to dip your roots in later to remove the bacteria and the disease. So this is why I've got chopsticks. I'm just gonna use one and swirl that solution around. And then you can just leave it in there. And I'm gonna put this to the side. Okay, so now I'm gonna put on my gloves and start pre-mixing and preparing my soil. So I've got some premium potting mix in here and I previously boiled some water and poured it all over and left it out to get rid of fungus gnats. Um, I found this was a great trick to remove fungus gnats and I want to aerate my soil a little bit more so I'm going to add some perlite and charcoal into the mix before I actually embark on my rot removal. So um, this is about half full in this pot of premium potting mix. It's looking good, no gnats as I've shaked it out 
And I have some leftover perlite here, which I'm gonna add into the mix. And usually I go for maybe 50, 60% premium potting mix to 30% perlite. So it's gonna be a little bit dusty there. Normally recommend that you use a, a dust mask because obviously these can be a little bit toxic in terms of fumes. But I've got a small quantity here and it should be okay. Put that aside, just show that to the camera. And then this will be great for, as a substrate, the charcoal. Because basically it sweetens the soil and removes odor and bacteria. So I'm just gonna grab a handful of that and add that to my mix. Cool. This is a great one, especially for treating root rot. So I'm put that to the side and I'm just going to mix that in with my gloves just so I can get a little bit more of a homogeneous mix. So here I'm improving the aeration of the soil before I replant this. I'm using this as a golden opportunity to change up that soil because this soil is actually in the original soil that the plant came in, so it was long overdue. So I've now mixed that through. You can see it's a little bit more chunky now. Hopefully you can see that. But yeah, that's gonna improve aeration. And I've used a premium potting mix, which will retain moisture as well. Cool. Now we're gonna get into the rot removal. Pulling my plant out of the decorative pot. I'm just gonna place it here. Okay, so gently massage the bottom of the pot. And then hopefully hold it by the base. And yeah, that came out pretty easily. Okay. So, hopefully you can see this. So luckily I still have some healthy roots in here. Um, as you can see from white and yellow. But, oh, going to now remove and massage the roots of this plant. And then get some of that old soil out. Oh, look at all this white mildew or mold. But yeah. You can already see some of that mushy root already fall off as I'm pulling this out. I'm gonna grab my other chopstick. This is why I have a pair. And thread all of that. I poke gently all that old soil out. The reason why I'm using gloves is that root rot is essentially a disease or bacteria. You kind of don't want to be playing around with that with your hands. So make sure you use gloves. Oh, see? Okay. This is where you can show you the rot. But that root there is all black and mushy and it smells so I'm... I want to be very careful as well because I don't want to damage and stress out the roots. I mean, pothos are generally very hardy plants, so I'm very confident it will bounce back. All right, so your next step after you've removed that soil is grab a pair of scissors um, so I should have disinfected this earlier, but basically this is why I've got some wet wipes, some disinfectant Dettol wet wipes, and I'm quickly wipe down 
few scissors and some wet paper towel to disinfect that. To the side. And let's start chopping off that root rot. Okay. So tip is, if only half of that root is rotten, don't cut the whole root off. Just cut off from where you see that rot. Okay, so the most tragic thing just happened. I filmed the rest of this video with the camera off because the batteries ran out. Anyway, luckily I have some backup iPhone footage, so I apologize in advance. I'm gonna switch the view up because I wanna make sure that I walk you through the whole entire process. Here, we're gonna grab our hydrogen peroxide solution. Uh, one, two, three. And give it a quick dab into the water. Now it's time to repot. Now I want to make sure that the nodes are also sticking into the soil at the same time. So then it has more potential for growth and new roots to form in there. So by that I mean the node And I want to plant that in. And trick, you can use a bobby pin to plant that in. I've actually got bobby pins here. You can clip it on the top, so then your plant has more opportunity to grow new roots from those nodes. Cool. But the next step here is I'm just going to cut off some of those yellow leaves that I saw. Uh, this one already fell off, which is great. One less stem I have to cut. This one's yellowing, so I'm just going to cut that off. What you could also do, and another tip um, for when you're treating root rot, is take a clipping or a cutting of your plant, just as an insurance policy. So now that we've treated that, I'm going to put a tray underneath it and water it sparingly. And do not fertilize. Now it's the waiting game. I do think this is going to be successful because I did see a lot of healthy roots. I stopped it quite early. But remember, if you do see root rot, treat it ASAP. If you made it to the end of this video, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new. Remember to give this video a thumbs up. If you liked today's video, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell icon so you get notifications so you don't miss any updates when new videos drop. On to Plant Rants. Welcome to Plant Rants and Bants, where I showcase some cool, funny or interesting plant content that I find online. Alright, who else relates to this one? I basically have to cover both of my eyes and run when I'm passing the nursery at Bunnings when I'm out there trying to buy random hardware items. This is me especially on a Saturday or Sunday when I'm hung over as hell and want to make sure that my plants are watered in the morning. The struggle is real. Now this meme has been making the rounds but let's be honest here, this is probably what you're feeling after watching my video if you've made it to the end. 